Hey everybody, welcome back. Happy Friday. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, I'm sure everyone's heard the news. I mean, I, I talked about the debate and now it sounds like, unless it's just like some lie to delay the election, but I thought that's hilarious last night that now all of a sudden Trump and Melania supposedly have COVID. Oh man, this this election, I tell you, it's just one thing after another. It's, it's entertaining. It's comical to say the least. And I just cannot wait to see, and you know, Biden, was, I sure hope Biden didn't get it from him. They were pretty close and they were talking to each other. Biden kept turning towards Trump and Trump especially was turning towards Biden. Uh, I sure hope Biden doesn't get it, but oh well, what can you do? I, I'm surprised that they didn't. Uh, I thought it was, I was shocked that they were doing it in person. I thought that they would um, do it virtually. So when they were doing it in person, I was shocked and they had them pretty close to each other. And at first, I, I, I knew they wouldn't shake hands, even if it wasn't that they don't like each other. But at first, when I heard, like, oh, yeah, they're not going to shake hands, like, whoa, wow. Like, because I know they Trump, they, Trump and Biden, they definitely do not like each other at all. But then when they said, oh, because of the COVID, like, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. But they wouldn't do it anyways. So anyway, put that aside. But um, this is a follow-up to my video last week that I did on Police Academy movies. And I think I'm going to do them one by one, funny parts, throughout each Police Academy movie one through six. I'm not gonna, I never saw seven, and seven, like I said, it sucked a lot of ass from what I heard, so I'm not gonna talk about seven Mission to Moscow. I didn't really have a lot of the main characters from the original movies. So, um, there was a guy that, uh, he was only in Police Academy one, George Martin. Not, not his real life, just his character name. I forget what his name was in real life. He actually. Died of cancer. Yeah, him and Mahoney were buddies, Steve Gutenberg. And there was a funny part at the beginning. His hair was a, just a little, little bit long. And Lieutenant Harris was telling him and those two other cadets, Col Copeland and Blanks, he said, hey, you you guys go to, I think he was talking to Copeland. And he's like, oh, you three guys go to the Academy Barber before you do anything else. And Copeland's like, well, where's that? Lieutenant Harris is like, find it, rat face. And he really was talking to Copeland. And Copeland's like rat face, and then his buddy Blanks was trying to cheer him up. He's no, no, he met the other guy. He's like, oh, 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 okay, you know, you know such an idiot. <laughs> so they go to the Academy Barber, and uh, George Martin is like the first one to sit down. And um, I think it was like Copeland or Blanks is like, oh, move it out of the way, move, uh, get out of the way, dirtbag. He's like, um, step aside, dirtbag, like I'm first. And then uh, Copeland is again. Like, yeah, I'm next, and he uh, he just took it with a grain of salt. He's like, "Yeah, fuck you guys." He's like, oh, for such important people like you, I'll wait. So Copeland and Blanks, they thought it was like the army, like you had to get your head shaved off, like shorter than my hair, like completely bald. So they get shaved completely bald, and then George Martin goes to sit down. He tells the barbers, "Yeah, just a little off the sides, please." Like, "Oh, sure, you got it." And then they're like, "Oh, you can do that." And the barber's like, yeah, sure, this ain't the army, you know. And he kind of, George Martin kind of, look, they, they look at each other like, man, we're a couple of idiots. And uh, George Martin's looking at them like, yeah, don't you guys feel like assholes now? So he screwed them over. And then uh, Kim Cattrall was in the first one, and Mahoney, Steve Gutenberg, was checking her out. He was pretending that he was standing behind her, acting like he was like a, you know, like an army drill sergeant, one of the sergeants or lieutenants, something like that. And, uh, He's like, oh, what's your name, young lady? And she's like, Karen Thompson. And she's like asking for her address, phone number, all this information. And he's like, eyes oh, front, telephone number. And she gives him all the information. And he's like, let's see your thighs, please. And she's kind of has this look in her face, like, what? And he's like, come on, come on. I haven't got all day the thighs. And he wanted out of the academy, but he had fallen in love with her. So he wanted to stay in. It was funny. At first, like, he wanted to get kicked out. He was just um, in trouble. He had a choice of either doing the 14 weeks of police academy or jail um it turned out um he was in and out of trouble with the law but his dad who passed away i guess his uh, best friend was like this captain of this police department he was always saving mahoney's butt and he's like oh i made a decision he's like i'm not gonna help you this time he's like, you're going to the you're going to jail and he says oh he's like i can't go to jail he's like i didn't do anything really major come on can't you give me a break in this one and he's like okay i'll make a deal with you and then he uh tells him you know yeah you'll go uh, 14 weeks of this academy training and discipline starting monday morning and he says even if you don't graduate the training will be good for you 
And um, he says, he tells them that, you know, you, you, they can throw you out, but he's like, you can't quit. You quit and you're back in jail, and that's the deal. And as soon as he gets to the academy, like, he's trying to get thrown out because he, he beats this George Martin. And he's like, oh, you can't make a debt, too? He's like, oh, yeah, I am until I get, get thrown out of here. He's like, I'm hoping to be out of here by, I don't know what time it was, sometime in the morning. He's like, yeah, I'm hoping to be out of here by 10 a.m. And he's like, you mean you, you just joined the academy to get thrown out? He's like, yep, yep, that's my goal. He's like, wow, he's like, you're a pretty interesting guy yourself. And then he finds out it was all set up. He's, like, doing all this shit to try to get thrown out. And they're like, they were coming at Lassard. You know, George, uh, George Gaines is like, well, you're a special case. You can quit. You know, I promised your buddy, Captain Reed, that we keep you here the full 14 weeks. And um, there was that Lieutenant Harris throughout the whole movie. He's constantly riding Mahoney. He's like, trying to get thrown out. So he's constantly riding Mahoney's ass. So it's funny, like, once he falls in love with Kim Cattrall, then they're really, really trying to override that Captain Reed, get him thrown out, kicked out. But then he wants to stay because he's in love with... Kim Cattrall, and I think, yeah, Lieutenant Harris keeps telling him, he keeps telling him, like, yeah, he's like, uh, no, oh yeah, nobody screws with me, and then I think the last time he says it, he's like, Mahoney, I've told you several times, like, nobody screws with me, and he says, oh, maybe next time you meet the right girl and all that will change, he just totally flips out, and at one point, Blinks and Copeland, they got, uh, even though they're cadets, Lieutenant Harris, mainly just because they shaved their heads, he likes them, and he appointed them to be, assigned them to be squad leaders, and made Mahoney do 100 push-ups, and Mahoney's on like 99, he's like, come on Mahoney, Harris said you had to do 100, and then uh, Blinks puts a pair of like his old sweat socks under Mahoney's nose, like, hey Mahoney, he's like, here's a pair of my old sweat socks, he puts them right under his nose, like, oh, that should help you to get up. And then he gets up, does the hundred. He's like, yeah, you did it. He's like, oh, you son of a bitch. And then um, he's like, oh, man. He comes back into the locker room. And he's like, oh, is that the way I'm going to spend all my evenings? He's like, I can't feel my arms anymore. And there was another cadet. He was only in the first movie, too. His name was Leslie Barbara. <laughs> Imagine he got, he was, throughout the whole uh, movie, he was, like, getting bullied. And Imagine, yeah, with a name like that, no wonder anybody would get bullied, no matter what size you are. And, He's kind of like a shorter, heavy set guy. And there's like a riot going on, and these guys were picking on him throughout the whole movie. These uh, guys have like this furniture store, there's like five or six of them. And uh, there's a riot going on, and they get deployed to help calm down the riot. And he, they basically, you know, he's telling them to get out of the area, you know, to freeze, and get your, he's got a gun point on them, they're still approaching him, and he ends up beating the shit out of all six of them, and it turned out they were just trying to save their own furniture shop, and he didn't know, and they were loading up their truck, he thought they were stealing it, but it was actually their furniture, so he beats the living shit out of these guys, <laughs> and he's like, alright, now, he's like, get the furniture back up there, and get out of the area, and then one guy, he's like, but, 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 but it's our furniture, and he has a look in his face, like, oh, I'm sorry, and he just walks away, and they're still so shocked that they beat, you know, he beat their ass, and then he's like, oh, shit, he's like, I beat their ass, they really didn't do anything wrong, but they were still bullying him, it's pretty funny, and there was one point towards the end where Mahoney and Kim Cattrall were making out behind the bleachers of the graduation ceremony, and Kim Cattrall, Eric Lassard, you know, the guy's like completely senile, he thought that, uh, because Kim Cattrall, she had her hair like up in a bun and she had a police cap on. He thought that she was a guy. So he's like, oh, this is back when, you know, homosexuality wasn't really accepted. And he's like, yelled at him. He's like, you men, stop that. And then she turns around. She takes her hat off, pulls her hair, you know, out of the bun. And he's like, oh, wow. Well, that's more like it, Mahoney. He's like, good man. Keep up the good work. And he's like, thank you, sir. And it was funny at the beginning. Um... The, the police force, were, they were, like, desperate for police officers, I don't know, due to higher rate of crime. So they were taking, like, anybody into the academy. It used to be, like, I don't know about now, but it's like they have guidelines you have to follow that you have to meet. You know, like, like I know I worked at a jail for 10 years, and the correctional officers, like, they had to pass, uh, what was, well, obviously drugs, drug test, um... There was like a physical, a psychological exam. You had to interview really well. And I think there was some type of like intelligence test you had to pass. It was uh, really uh, ironic because most of the officers I worked with there, they were not, like, I'm not saying they're stupid, but 
most of them were just like average intelligence. They weren't, uh, yeah, they didn't seem like the brightest tools in the shed. You know, some of them seemed like they were below average intelligence, but whatever. So the uh, Chief Hurst, he's like watching all of these, uh, what they call them misfits in the movie. He was talking about all these you know, misfit, misfits joining the police force. So Commissioner Hurst is watching all the cadets come in. And he all, like I said, coming at Lassard. He's like completely, like he's starting to go see now, get an adventure or something like that. So coming at Lassard is like looking out the window, watching them all come in. He's like, look at that. Just look at that. Look at that scum. Lassard, when I went through this academy, each cadet was the height, right, the right height, the right weight, the right gender, and, or you said, yeah, the right height, the right weight, the right color, and they all had Johnson's Lassard, every single one of them. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So Lassard's like, Johnson's? And he's like, yeah, you know. And he kind of points to his dick. And Lassard still doesn't know what he's talking about, but he pretends. He's bullshitting him. He's like, oh, yes. And he's like, yeah, back in those days, there were Johnson's as far as the eye could see. And then Lassard, even he still doesn't know what he's talking about. He's like, yeah, oh, yeah, and what a lovely sight it was. And then they're talking about how they want them, the mayor. Oh, yeah, that's what he, it happens next. He's like... He, Commi uh, Commissioner Hurst, or Chief Hurst, he's like telling Lassard, he's like, have you seen these applications? Have you seen the scum that has been handed off to us? The mayor wants something done about this. She is appalled. What do you, or, or did, I think was the mayor in favor of it or something like that? The mayor, she wants us to let anybody who wants to get on the police force into this academy. He's like, what do you say to that, Lassard? And he's like, uh, she's a bitch. And uh, for some reason, like, they didn't want them to automatically throw them out. They wanted to encourage them to quit on their own. Because Lassard's like, oh, no problem, Chief. We'll start washing them out this morning. And Hurst is like, we do not throw them out. They must be encouraged to quit on their own. I think, he's like, do you understand? And then I think Lieutenant Harris is like, oh, I definitely understand, Chief Hurst. And he's like, thank you, Lieutenant Harris. I'm sure you do. And as uh, Chief Hurst walks out... He's, you know, Lieutenant Harris walks out like, oh, do you understand, Commandant? And he's like, oh, yeah, it's as clear as glass, Chief. And he's like, good, then we all know what to do. And, you know, and they start, all start cracking up. And after the door, once the Lieutenant Harris and Chief Hurst walk out, the door closes into the Sergeant's office. He's still sitting there like, what the fuck are they just talking about? Oh, God, poor old man. <laughs> oh. And Tackleberry was a big, uh, David Graff, he was a big uh, gun freak. <laughs> the first thing he says, like, oh, what about guns? When they're getting your uniforms, like, what about what about guns? When we get guns, there's like next, next, and they do um their first practice at the shooting range, and they had assigned guns. And he brings in, he sneaks in like his own gun. And it's got like a really long, I don't know what kind of gun it is, a really long barrel, and uh, he fires at the target. Now he just gets a bullseye. He bulls like oh fucking target off. Lieutenant here sees it, and he's like, he's like, sir. He's like, where did you get this gun? He's like, oh, my mom gave it to me. And he's like, ah, may I borrow it for a little while? He's like, sure. He hands over the gun to him. <laughs> he's like so nervous. He empties all the bullets out of the chamber, all the rounds out. And then there was another part where they were doing like this make believe uh, robbery and like pretending. You know, if you were the officer, what would you say? What would you do? And this uh, that one um, female officer, Hook, she's kind of shy and she's nervous. And uh, he's like, you know, Lieutenant Harris like, okay, here's the house. Here's the window. I'm the burglar. I'm coming out of the window with a stolen stereo in my hand. He's like, what do you say, Hooks? And she's like, stop! This is a stick-up! He's like, stick-up? And she's like, I, I mean, police, police, police officer. He's like, sit down, Hooks. Sit, sit, sit! And then he's, he calls Tackleberry up. He's like, Tackleberry, you try it. Same situation. All right, once again, here's the house. Here's the window. I'm the burglar. I'm coming out of the window. I got the stolen stereo in my hand. What do you say, Tackleberry? He's like, drop that fucking stereo before I blow your goddamn nuts off, asshole. And he's like, Tackleberry, we really need to talk. And then Hightower was funny in that, the big guy, Bubba Smith, there was one point where he's climbing like the rope, and he just like grabs onto it, starts climbing from the bottom, and the fucking thing just comes out of the ceiling, he's like, oh, that's real good, Hightower, he's like, why don't you just have a seat over there? And then at one point, um, I think Hightower, somebody called, because Hooks is black, and I forget what it was, but uh, she had, re doing the driver's test, she ran over Copeland's feet, 
and he called her some, I haven't seen the movie for a long time, but I just remember he called her some type of a black racial slur, and Hightower got so pissed, and instead of the guy just like, you know, instead of Blanks just like, or Copeland just running away, he just get, sits back down in the car, I think he was up to do the, excuse me, the driver's test next, driver's test next, and Hightower just tips the whole fucking car over with him inside, <laughs> so, man, I think that's all the funny parts from Police Academy 1, so, uh, yeah, have a good weekend, everybody. Happy Friday, and uh, I'll probably do Police Academy 2 this weekend, maybe even 3 this weekend, and I'll do 4, 5, and 6 later. I'm going to do them in order. All right, so thank you so much for watching. Comment, like, share, subscribe. See you all real soon. Another great video. Have a great weekend, everybody. Talk to you all later. Take care, and stay safe out there. Bye.